am looking for a Band-Aid. Uh, what do you need a Band-Aid for? Cut my finger. It's been bleeding. Don't you know that the Band-Aids go right in here? I know the, they do. The red thing with the cross on it? That means first aid. Well, and if you looked in here, there were some. Oh, well, I found one in here. Well, here, just put, touch this. What? Touch this. Why? Well, because I'm going to tell you a story uh, today about a lady who she touched Jesus's cloak and she was healed from her illnesses. Well, but she I may have, but touching yours isn't going to do a thing. Well, that's true. You'd probably get blood on it or something. Uh, Why just, don't you tell the boys and girls? All right, just wear it sit there with your band aid. All right, hi, boys and girls. We sure are missing you. And like I told Mr. Murray, I'm going to tell you a story today about a lady um, who was, she had been bleeding just like Mr. Murray here with his finger. <laughs> she had been bleeding, but she'd been bleeding for 12 years. Oh. I know it. Long, long time. And she had seen all kinds of doctors and had spent all of her money trying to get better. And nobody could help her. And she was getting worse. And so she knew that Jesus was coming um, to, the, to her town. And so she said, if I touch Jesus' clothes, I know that I can be healed. So she came up behind Jesus and she reached out and she touched his clothes. And immediately she stopped bleeding. She was well, she was healed. And Jesus felt kind of like the power had gone out of him and he stopped and he turned around and he said, who touched my clothes? And Jesus' disciples pointed around to different people around him and they said um, that there were so many people that they really didn't know who touched him. But the woman, knowing that she was healed, came forward. She didn't hide. She fell before Jesus and she told him what had happened. And Jesus said to her, Daughter, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. You are healed. Now, while Jesus was speaking to her, some men came from um, one of the temple leaders' houses. And he, they came to him and, and said, Come quick. Your daughter is dead to the man. His name was Jairus. And he says, Don't bother Jesus anymore because your daughter, she's dead. Just no use in Jesus coming now. But Jesus and all the three men went away with his disciples to Jairus' house. People there, oh, they were crying and they were wailing, oh, oh, oh loudly. And um, Jesus said, why are you crying? The child is not dead. She is sleeping. And the people, some of them laughed because they did not believe Jesus. And they told him to leave. But Jesus took Jairus and his wife into the room where the child was. And he took the little girl by the hand and he said, little girl, get up. And immediately the little girl got up and began walking around and Jairus and his wife were just amazed. And Jesus told them to give that little girl some food. She was probably hungry. And he told them not to tell anyone what he had, had done. And so by healing the woman and from raising the little girl from the dead, Jesus showed his power as the Messiah. You know, you told me my, my clothes couldn't do any power. That's because I'm not the Messiah. But Jesus can. He has that power. He has that power because he died on the cross and he rose again to save people from sin and death. When we trust in Jesus, God forgives our sins and he changes us to be more like his son. That's right. Boys and girls, we've started a new unit today and all the stories in this unit 
are going to be about amazing things that Jesus did, healing other people. And he did those things, just like Miss Murray said, to show the people back in those days that he had the power and he was the one true Messiah. Since it's a new unit, we also have a new key passage or Bible verse. Now, this one is pretty long, but I wanted to share it with you and I want to talk about just one part of it with you after I read it. And here it is. So listen carefully. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, we are healed. And that's from the book of Isaiah chapter 53, verses 4 and 5. Lots of big words that are kind of hard to understand, but I want you just to focus in on that last part, and I'm going to read that again. By his wounds, we are healed. And what that means, boys and girls, is that by dying on the cross, Jesus was wounded, we're healed. Mm -hmm. We are saved from our sins and we're able to live forever with God if we trust Jesus because he was wounded and died on the cross that's for exactly our sins. That's exactly right. So that's the important thing to remember from that verse. By his wounds, we are healed. So that's a thankful. happy thought to end on, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and have our prayer. So let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending your son Jesus so that by his wounds on the cross, we can live forever and our sins can be forgiven. Thank you for this time together and be with us throughout this next week. And all God's Jill people said, said Amen. Amen. Now let me see your finger. Oh, poor baby. Let me kiss it and make it all better. That didn't work either. Oh, <laughs> Bye, boys and girls. Have a great week. Bye. We'll see you next week.